If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode, in this very serious episode <laughs> Anything but that. of Mind Pump, for about 11 minutes, uh, we talk about uh, common mind pump sayings. Oh. Yeah, I forgot what that was about. Oh, yeah, that's right. We, <laughs> we have all have our own. That's like, right. That's yeah. the thing. And uh, Justin teaches us how to speak elfin and orc. <laughs> Believe it or not. Very educational. Believe it or not, he does speak both of those fluently. Yeah. Uh, we talk about great whites. Uh, sharks in Santa Cruz. <laughs> great white. If it's yeah, yeah. great white sharks. Sharks in. Uh, in they're scary. It's the Latin, which is why I won't swim yeah. in the ocean. I'm actually scared of them. Um, then we get to the questions of this episode. We talk about the best exercise or the best ways to do exercise to correct a sagging or uneven boob shoulder. Oh, shoulder I knew yeah. you thought I'd say that no. shoulder. It ain't that then we talk uh, about our thoughts on whether or not children should lift weights. Between 12 and 13, as he, my voice actually became childlike there for <laughs> a children. split second. <laughs> yeah. uh, then we answer the question of whether or not we recommend a mini cut for someone, even if their BMI is above 35. So in other words, somebody's got uh, some some serious obesity issues. Uh, do we still recommend mini cuts or should they just go cut all the way? Hmm. Final question, uh, our opinion on obstacle course racing, otherwise known as OCR, the training, the events, and how our methodology could be used to benefit competitors in the sport. Find out if we'll see you there. Finally, mm. uh, the Maps Prime Pro Bundle it's here. is here. So we just released our newest the program, combo. Maps Prime Pro, which is our most correctional Maps program ever. It looks at the joints of the wrists. It looks at the neck, the lumbar spine, the hips. The ankles and the toes, all the areas that you probably didn't know, uh, should also be well connected and have good recruitment patterns that can affect the rest of your workouts. It's in that program. It's correctional. But we also have our normal MAPS Prime program, which teaches your body how to prime your workouts according to your body and how it moves. Well, we took them and we put them together in a bundle. Mm. Uh, the price is discounted tremendously. And the place to get this Prime Pro bundle is at mindpumpmedia.com. Doug, are we giving some shirts away right now or we what? We are. We're giving away five shirts. Okay, give them away. Yeah, we had 15 reviews, so we got Theodore the Great, Nikhil Nalamothu, Muscle Hamster Watson, A. Cameron 37, Ooh, hamster. Nick Ford. All of you are winners. Send the name I just read to iTunes at mindpumpmedia.com. Your shipping address and your shirt size, and we'll get that right out to you. Get Boom. your shirts. Pippa monkey in the wrench. Yes, that's dude. One hundred percent. That's a wrench. fucking saying. Now yes, that is it's stuck. It. Damn it, it's stuck. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the, so we got to forever. Of, yeah, because I don't know. If, hopefully, this episode airs after the last one we did, so that people know. What we're yeah, about I know it'll be really. Doug just nodded. Confusing. Yes. Confusing. Okay. So uh, the the normal saying is throw throw a wrench throw a wrench in the mix in in it. Yeah, just throw, in it, yeah. I throw a wrench in the machine. Thank you. See? Throw a monkey wrench in the works. Monkey wrench in the works? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so Justin took a shortcut. I, obviously. <laughs> I, he just throws the monkey just in the wrench. Just it together in a but unique if, way. But if you think about it, I love sayings because uh, when you throw, think of the saying, it in makes the sense. Wrench. Like, there's a fucking yeah. wrench. You throw a monkey in that motherfucking wrench. Oh, you throw a monkey in that wrench. <laughs> uh, shit's going down. You know what my favorite yeah. saying of all time is? Because every time I hear it, I picture it. Mm. <laughs> when the shit hits the fan. <laughs> 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 and it yeah. just, oh, God. Just, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Everywhere. It reminds me of like Indiana Jones. Oh, my God. I was just Where the guy's that. just back it up and he's like, ah, and like, then it's. Yeah. Splats. Do you know what, what movie what, that is, Adam? No. Well, I know Indiana Jones, but I don't remember that part. What oh, my God. It's an oh, iconic yeah. part. Raiders of the Lost Ark. He what? keeps disappointing me. What yeah. part? He was the big, huge uh, ger uh, uh, Nazi guy. Yeah, I remember, and he's fighting him, and he's just getting his ass kicked, yeah. and then he's back. He's backing him up, backing him up, but the guy doesn't know that behind him mm -hmm. is a propeller. Yeah, which is bullshit because you'd hear that motherfucker right yeah, behind. I think him. you would even feel just the the you know moving air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Can't give it away. Doug, you know? Click the translation for that. Let me see what the translation. I want to read what the yeah. translation is. He to got do something that it's, I just read it. It was right there, dude. What are you doing? To do something that prevents a plan or activity from Throw succeeding. Throw a monkey oh. 
in the funding for the project was withdrawn so that really threw a monkey in the wrench (laughs) (laughs) a monkey wrench in In the the works works. yeah that's what you're supposed Uh, to say (laughs) so what's your favorite saying mine is when the when the shit hits the fan what's yours yeah i don't know if i have a go-to of course you do. You gotta have. It. Just, it's not coming to you right now. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You, I think we would know each other. Like, what do, what do I? What do you catch me saying a lot? In my wheelhouse, I'm like it's uh, going it's downtown. Yeah. Julie Brown. Yeah. No, I, is that another one? I, I, or is that just me? That's okay, you. I like. I think Adam it, always says wheelhouse. downtown. Julie Brown. I, okay, see, that's good. I, I, that wheelhouse is, is yours. What's Justin? Yeah, yeah, I do. Use, I do use. What that? is me? I mean, I use that one. That was terrible. <laughs> I don't know. I can't understand what it is because it's an elfish. Lena, no, no. See, <laughs> Did you just speak elf right now? I, He's I done did. that so many times, dude. Yeah. That's his, literally that's his fucking Listen, saying. I know it's the same. Sense. I know different language. I'm multilingual, <laughs> but it's not real languages. You know what I mean? It's like it's like, like pig, pig me, elfish. Yeah. What else? You what else? Right. Orc. You know. <laughs> So you can communicate to all the Disney characters. Yeah, yeah I don't. Uh, I'm trying to think of something that you say all the time. What do you? You know what? Oh, Sal says, "Ladies and gentlemen." Yeah. Which, by the, the way, ladies and gentlemen. gentlemen. By the way, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's your work. <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty accurate. Did you know you can't say "ladies and gentlemen" anymore? Why? Because I'm not making this up. I actually read a fucking article about this. Because oh, it's assuming God. everybody's gender in the crowd. Oh my so God! I oh, dude, I am not oh, this joking. Has gone too far. Yeah, I too can't say, far. ladies and gentlemen. So no. fuck, I don't know what you're supposed to say. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna have to get onto you every time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all the gender pronouns. Yeah. yeah. Uh, attention, use use people. <laughs> I mean, I, I gotta you can't take even it back. say people. Maybe I mean, it's not a person. I gotta it take it back. A tree. You have one other one that you do, and yeah. I can't. I can't remember. It's ladies this. and gentlemen is one of them. That's uh, what, uh, trip yeah. off this. I always say that. Uh, what else do I say? You say, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I say dude, but that's, you know, it's a given. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. And that's not really a saying. No. And dude, by the way, I learned this because I had a friend from the East Coast. Dude is just as common on the East Coast as it is on the West Coast. They just use it differently. For example. Yeah, give me an example. In California, if I want, like, if I want Justin to go get me a pizza, go, go, go and get, uh, get a pizza with me. I'll say, dude, let's go get a pizza. On the East Coast, they'll say, let's go get a pizza, dude. They throw it at the end like that. Let's go a get little a pizza, different. dude. dude yeah, See, that that means something totally different to me. What do you mean? Like, go get oh, a pizza, I'm dude. Go get a pizza, dude. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get gay. Let's <laughs> do this. <laughs> I've always wanted to be with a pizza dude. I want a pizza dude. I've been watching a lot of porn. <laughs> so, <laughs> Come on, East Coast people. <laughs> that's not how you use it. But that's how they use it, dude. Remember, remember DJ? Is that true? And his brother Paul. Remember Paul uh, and his brother and DJ? They were uh, brother-in-law. Anyway, DJ Densmore. You know oh, DJ. okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, what they used, that's how they used to use it from Boston. Hmm. And so they used to use dude at the end of every sentence, and oh, I always started sorry. off the sentence with dude. Yes. It was fascinating like, to me. It was, it was mind-blowing. Yeah. Well, it's like, Sal, and then you say something. Dude, then you yeah. say something. Yeah. It they say something and then dude. Dude, check something this out. I like Sal. your shoes, dude. Like that. Versus dude, I like your shoes. Hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I do. It's, it's, dude. It's, 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 it's backwards. <laughs> yeah. And because dude originated in California, I mean, they're basically copying us and fucking it up. So hey, East Coast. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Is yeah. that the origin? Is the origin from here? Has to be because it's a surfer term. I yeah. would I would imagine. Oh no, it Surf, might be surfs up. No, dude. hold on a second. It might be a Western thing because uh-huh. of like yes, with yeah, the, and cowboys the and shit. Well, it, dude, it, ranch and if, all that. Well, if your theory on it being a surfer and the saying is surfs up, dude, isn't that what the saying is? Yeah, they did that after. And yeah, they. At, yeah, I get that. It's not dude surfs up. I know that, no. but but I'm saying the way it's used in our lexicon, the way we speak it, yeah. is we say it first. Like, yeah, but if that, where's the origin? So where's it coming oh, from? I don't know. Doug's yeah. looking it up right now. Are you looking up the origin of dude? Can dude, you look that? Up? Oh, so the late 19th century, denoting a dandy, uh, probably shortened from doodle, perhaps with Yankee wow. doodle. That's not as cool. As- oh, so like Yankee doodle do dandy. So Yankee doodle dude. Mm. That's way better than dandy. I don't like the, da- the sound yeah, of dandy. Yeah, yeah, forget about that. <laughs> hey, 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 dandy. Yeah, that's let's a dandy. Go hang out. Yeah, yeah, I don't like that that mm. much. Dude, you know what I saw? <laughs> See, I said it right now. Yep. Yeah, do you know what I? Do you know what I saw, dude? I was on uh, <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> you know what I saw, dude. <laughs> I was on Facebook. I have to actually have a conversation with you, Justin. <laughs> okay. Because right, I know fine. you go to the beach a lot because you live in the Santa Cruz area. Yeah. And you go in the ocean. Yeah. Do you go in the ocean far enough to where your feet don't touch the sand anymore? Do you swim mm. in the ocean? 
Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah, like I not very frequently. Good. No. Fuck. Wow. Yeah. Thank I, God. Oof. Do you guys realize how many great white sharks there yeah, are? Yeah, just recently they had to close the beaches, right? Not fucking sharks. Like, oh, it's a shark. Yeah, no, these are legit the fu- man eaters. The biggest ones in the world, and they and the the highest concentration, I believe. Dude, that's why I never got into surfing, dude. <laughs> yeah. okay. so I tried to add that one yeah. in there. Yeah. Uh, crazy, right there, dude, in our backyard. Is it the worst here? It's I. Th- what is it though? There's that- a lot here, but I think Australia is worse. Um, I don't know. Or I want to say coast of uh, South Africa. South Africa, I believe, is the worst. Yeah. But I, th- I know it's one of the most populated areas it's in the definitely, world. Definitely, yeah. Because scientists but- actually go. There's a spot. What is it? That spot? It's like an underground, mm-hmm. uh, an underground underwater uh, shipwreck. Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And like hell of them are over there. And if yeah. you go diving and stuff, you like, always you- see them like where that where that one I feel cement like that ship based was. Based off of information you got from like a Disney cartoon. Mm. No, 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 no. no. The, what? No, no, no. It was, <laughs> you know what you're thinking? Yeah, you know what you're thinking yeah. right now? Or I Nemo. Or, better. You're thinking yeah, Little yeah. Nemo because yeah. they swam through and the, the ship. Yes, got the reference. Good I job. did get the reference. Right. Yeah, so. <laughs> no, no. There's a there's a shipwreck or something, right? Like a cement mm-hmm. something down there yeah. and tons of great whites. And so I, it makes me totally reaffirms my fear of the ocean. I never go out that far. Like, yeah. I'm not going to go swimming. My feet don't go. If I could touch the ground, I'm cool. When was the last time, Justin, there was an attack? Oh, look at just this. recently, actually. Here's some stats for you. Well, and this is total attacks. I'm talking about great white sharks, but yeah, this is total attacks. Because total attacks, you're going to have to count. Are we not even in the top 10? No, Florida is USA. Yeah. But, I mean, they're not that frequent. Oh, uh, okay. no, no. California, USA. Yeah. Okay. So what, you, what I want to see, Doug, okay, we're is five. highest instance of great white uh, shark attacks. Yeah. Not just shark attacks, because you could get bit by like a nurse shark. Come on, Doug, step yeah. up your Googling. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> a little, little sand shark just yeah. nibbling yeah. on yeah. you. Oh, I got attacked <laughs> by a shark. Ew. Yeah, it doesn't count. I'm reporting this. Yeah. Yeah. But I never go in the ocean where my feet don't touch because I feel like it's going to bite my toes and shit. So I'm out. I'm, I'm in the sand. Yeah. I, you know what's funny? The fear I'm a land always, animal. The fear yeah. I've always had of the ocean is not of sharks. It's just it's just gross and seaweed and slimy wow. and like god damn you sound like yeah. a pussy yeah. right yeah mm. like says the guy who won't swim or <laughs> well, deeper. I li- because for sharks not because it's icky you nibble my toes <laughs> yeah because <laughs> <laughs> it's hey dude well i'm watch also, out for the sharks forget I'm that like, it's gonna take a bite out of my ribs i'm, all, I'm also talking about <laughs> when i'm five I years old i shit. grew the fuck out of that at least so i'll go out and swim oh <laughs> so so when you go swim like, just let me here i'm gonna pose a scenario you're at the delta or something like that where it's murky as fuck and dirty and you're swimming where your feet don't touch, and then you feel something brush by your toes. Do you freak out? <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh, my God. I lose my mind if that happens. Uh, Ugh, it's horrible. Yeah. All right. Bring on the questions, Douglas. being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking quad. The eagle has landed. All right, our first Not question fair. is from Mr. Mallory. What are the best ways... Or exercises to correct a sagging, uneven shoulder. A sagging shoulder? So one that's kind of dropped? Sagging. Yeah. Uh, would that be forward shoulder? Or or, or is he talking about... No, I think he's got a down, banana like, shoulder. Yeah, he's probably... His, his, his scapula is probably elevated, right? Or he's On got, one side? Or do you think one is depressed too much on one side? Either way, right? Either yeah, way, you've got an imbalance. Yeah. A, a, most common that I've seen are um, people that have like one that's really like super overactive and tight. And like if you get somebody who does like a job where they're like riding on a whiteboard for yeah. hours all day long. It's actually so, common. I, I almost never see uh, unconditioned, I should say, people's uh, shoulders being even. When yeah, I do an assessment, there's always one that's higher yeah, than the other. Yeah, it's, it is common. It's it's definitely... Um, and, and what you see, I feel like you see this a lot with people that either drive so like my bus drivers taxi drivers someone who drives uber all day long somebody who is a teacher who is riding on a whiteboard or a chalkboard all day long somebody who is uh lifting their shoulder up um to do whatever they do for a living all day long uh, tend to have this imbalance and it's just Mm -hmm. the trap is super overactive and it on one side yeah rolls the the shoulder uh the shoulder girdle forward and up 
And uh, then if you don't correct that and you go do all your exercises, you just worsen the, the conditions. Yeah. So. Now, if uh, if this is due to an actual uh, problem, like a neurological issue, like you have not your typical poor connection because you don't use it, but you have an injury, an old injury that did something and now there's a muscle that's not really turning on. Like if you can rule that out and it's just basic, uh, you know, right to left and balance because of deconditioning, one of the... Yeah, the simplest things you can do is do all your movements with dumbbells, go really light, watch yourself in the mirror, and force yourself to be exactly the same or symmetrical between the two sides when you do your exercises. Now, this is going to require you to use uh, less weight than you normally would because the second you uh, raise the weight to a point where there's a certain amount of intensity involved, your old pattern will, will take over. Because that's the one you're strongest in. That's the one that you're, you're always in. So lightweight dumbbells go really slow and literally watch yourself and just match the two. And what you'll find is you'll, you'll end up having to take the weaker side and that's the one that's going to have to end up working more. But make sure everything looks exactly the same in the mirror and that should help. Another thing that I see that's common uh, with people with uneven shoulders is actually a serratus uh, imbalance where they get winging in the shoulder blade. You guys ever see that? Where mm-hmm. Somebody will do push-ups and one, one shoulder blade will wing a lot or they're standing and you can see it kind of winging a lot. And so sometimes people will notice that one shoulder is higher than the other, but they're not realizing that they're having winging going on just because they don't see themselves. What do you think about behind. doing a little, because this is pretty common and we have all dealt with this enough, what do you think about doing a little YouTube series where we uh, talk about different yeah. movements and ways that we would this address This is definitely it? a visual thing. Make mo- both yeah, things, both sides match show. or something like that. Okay. Yeah, we, Doug, maybe we, do a, maybe we do a YouTube series after this uh, to go in conjunction with the release of this. Okay. Uh, but yeah, cool. so if you have that issue where one of your shoulder blades is winging, um, then there, there are exercises you could do. For example, you could get into a push-up position with your arms locked, not bend your elbows, but let mm-hmm. your body sag between your shoulders and then so press away. Yeah. It's all scapular, and then you can start to strengthen mm-hmm. that right there. This is actually more the winging of the shoulder blade. It's not super common, but it's more common than you realize because I remember when I first got taught this years ago. Well, think about it. We're, you're either right or left-handed, and you're gonna do a lot more uh, with whatever dominant hand you are. And when you and you when you tend to throw a ball or write on a piece of paper or write anywhere on a chalkboard, whiteboard, drive a certain way, you naturally kind of roll the the shoulder forward. And if you're doing that on one side all day long, all the time, and you've you've done that for many years while you were not in the gym doing corrective movements to help keep it, you know, balanced. I mean, yeah, it's it's super common. It's in some people, it's really bad. Some people, it's like I think it's most common where it's just slightly off. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think when I yeah, really, yeah, because that's that's so common and it's hard to address because people sometimes even didn't even notice. You know I mean? Well, you know how I the to me the, how I always saw this right, and I remember like it took me a long time before I put this together and learned how to start to really help people here. But I remember uh, getting people under a bench press. And you, they always tend to uh, the bar is really uneven. Yeah. So if you're somebody who, when you bench press, even when you extend your arms, the bar isn't perfectly level, and you have a hard time keeping the bar perfectly level throughout the entire movement. Uh, this is tends to be one of the conditions right here mm-hmm. that that is causing that. So uh, that's one way for someone trying to figure that out. Quick commercial break. Hey, people ask us all the time how they can support Mind Pump. Here's what you can do. Uh, you can go to www.brain.fm forward slash mind pump and get 20% off Brain FM for meditation or focus. You can also go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump and get a 30 day trial plus one free audio book. Lastly, you can go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump and you will get a discount on Ben Greenfield's CBD product. Next up is Taryn Dutu. What are your thoughts on whether or not? children should lift weights and this person's referring to a 12 to 13 year old um you know what's interesting about this question is that people place uh weights in a different category or as if lifting resistance was um there was something inherently bad about it Mm -hmm. Uh, for the body, therefore you have to be a particular. The age. common now, thing is stunts your growth. That, yeah, I hear that it's a an lot. old yeah. it's an old myth. It's an old myth that training with weights will stunt your growth. Now, first off, <clears throat> definitely weight 
to before you lift weights, but not because of the resistance, but just because of the balance factor. A, a kid, when I, and I've trained young kids before, and the hardest thing to do with a 10-year-old when they're lifting a very light weight above their head that they have the strength to lift is keeping the balance with it. You give yeah, them two dumbbells. Just n- properly stabilizing themselves and being firm in positions. Yeah, like can, a lot of times, yeah, they just they just kind of go with momentum with a lot of their movement patterns, and that's something that they need to learn as a prerequisite to that for sure. Exactly, because their arms will move all over the place. So young, I mean, if you rephrase the question, uh, thoughts on whether or not children should be active? Yes, always, from day one. So and using resistance is absolutely fine, given they can, they have decent amount of balance, and it's usually around twelve or thirteen that you'll see more of it. But they still have poor balance. I'm not going to lie, a thirteen year old first time lifting, they also have poor balance. It's just not as bad, not nearly as bad as when they were nine or ten. Um, but yeah, there is no detriment at all to proper resistance training for anyone and there that myth of stunting growth is still i hate it it's still prevalent but yeah. it's a, it's a myth because what they did is they took when people came up with that myth is they they understood that when you're be- before a certain age there are growth plates in between your bones and your bones actually get longer and bigger and that's one of the reasons why you get taller and if you damage those growth plates the bone won't grow anymore or it won't grow any longer so you've essentially stunted the growth of those bones. Now, what we need to consider is the amount of force required to damage those growth plates with proper resistance training. I, I want to say proper. So, you get a 13 year old who's properly doing a barbell squat. The amount of weight that we would have to put on the bar in that proper form and technique and all that in order to damage those growth plates is way more weight than that 13 year old would ever be able to lift. It's just way more weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, there is no worry about that. Now, can you can you damage growth plates doing horrible form and you know banging something on yourself and falling down and stuff like that of course that can happen well that, i think that's accident. the big fear of allowing a 12 or 13 year old to work out um i i never liked training kids although i trained a ton i didn't like it because the, for this exact reason most of them their proprioception is so horrible that they're all over the place they're tripping over their feet they're super clumsy mm-hmm. uh getting them to settle down to train and work on mechanics so i had to come up with like like little clever tricks to get them to train the way I want to. So I'll give you an example. It just popped in my head when I'm thinking about this is I remember having uh, this kid who was uh, a hockey player and uh, he, you know, he was 12 or 13, right around that age. And uh, I was trying to get him to do a shoulder press and just not do it with like flailing his arms all over the place. And so I kind of made a game out of it where I stood in front of him and I balanced on one leg. I had him balance on one leg. And then I told him he had to mirror me with the weights. And then I grabbed like some 10 pound weights. He had some five pound weights and then we're shoulder pressing. And it was who could stay balancing and not set the dumbbells down the longest. And we're trying to mirror each other and go as slow as we can. And I made a game out of mirroring me and and actually stabilizing and slowing the repetition down as slow and controlled as possible because that's extremely challenging for them uh they'll they'll like sal said they'll want to flail their arms and they'll be all over the place they and, just have bad control of their of yeah their, of their so, bodies with weight at the end of their limbs yeah. you know so i mostly i you know at that age i think for the most part which they're now i've also had anomalies too i've also had kids that were just at that, their parents got them into sports and gymnastics. Yeah. Oh yeah, Gymna- you ever train a kid who's done yeah. gymnastics? Yeah, and they had unbelievable yeah. body control, and they I could teach them a deadlift. And well, a squ- that's the thing. If they have that, you know, uh, ability, like I'm not going to stifle that. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and build upon yeah. that. Yeah. Like, why would you? They they just have to prove that they have done that work to where they have mm-hmm. the control and the the means to. Uh, support their joints properly in all these different ranges of motion and um, you know especially too with whatever their goal is like it's it's great to teach kids uh, proper lifting techniques Uh, I think that a lot of the fear with this is is you know it's fear of bad coaches bad uh, strength conditioning like whatever the program is because there are a lot of bad uneducated coaches out there that will improperly load uh, weight on on kids and you know and like this happened actually to my wife like she had a, a really bad coach that um, you know took over the volleyball team and and had them all like doing backloaded squats with way too much weight and uh, you know there's it, I think it's it's unfortunate because like weights 
will definitely help aid in, in strength and performance. It's just there's a progression to that and there's a proper dose of that. And so, you know, you got to consider all these things. What like we're not trying to over intensify their workouts and that's not like the entire goal. Yeah. And in proper resistance training at that young of an age, that's and it's done properly. Remember, that's the, that's the key word here. Uh, huge benefit to a 12 or 13 year old. They will gain proprioceptive ability of their bodies at far faster rates doing that versus not doing it. Yeah, They will also build uh, muscle. And if they're a male in particular, going they start to go through puberty right around that age. You have your kid lift. I mean, if your kid's lifting weights and they love it and they're doing it right and they're doing it during their puberty years, you're taking advantage of a very anabolic yeah. uh, period Huge of life. spike. And <clears throat> there's been some speculation that right around that time is a good time to maybe induce muscle hyperplasia where you're not only thickening muscle fibers, but you're producing more muscle fibers. Hmm. So now uh, your kid probably is going to have better muscle building genes as an adult because of the training they did when they were young. But earlier we were talking about like kids in gymnastics, you know, that I have never seen a sport uh, Mm -hmm. done with kids that gives them just the body awareness. Like I was at the community pool with my kids over the weekend and there were these like, I don't know, they're probably 10, 10 10-year-old boys. First of all, I knew they were gymnasts because they were fucking ripped. Like these were 10-year-old kids and the dude they have six packs, you know what I mean? They're not muscular because they're small, but you can tell like, holy shit. And then sure enough, I'm watching them do handstand, you know, walking and they're doing backflips and then they're going off the diving board and doing all these flips and stuff. And yeah, I mean, their proprioceptive ability is amazing. And that's the flip side of it is if you start at a young age, and learn propio, proprioceptive ability and really train it in your body, you are setting yourself up really well uh, for the future because there's mm-hmm. a certain level of it that becomes permanent. Just like you know, when they say you never forget to learn a bike, part of the reason why you never forget to learn a bike, how to ride a bike is because you learn how to ride during that period of time when your body's kind of developing these, these permanent connections. So mm-hmm. uh, yeah, 12, 13 years old, do it properly. Great idea. Yeah, body body weight first, in my opinion, and then once you start to progress to weights, uh, stress mechanics over weight and go lean towards the slower repetitions. Um, you know, four, five, six, eight seconds, ten yeah. second. You know, eccentric motion. And so emphasizing the skill and the mechanics. Yeah, just going real, real slow. You know, slow on the way down in a squat. Pause at the bottom and then come up. You know, real slow on the way down. Pause. You know, just getting them to understand that control and uh, the isometric part of the exercise too um, over, you know, trying to get them to lift more weight, you know, go that direction first. Spet13 is asking, do you still recommend the mini cut way of eating if someone's BMI is over 35? I'm up there with my daily calorie burn is approximately 3,400. I am comfortable eating 18 to 2,200 calories is that too big of a deficit? I wish I knew what this person's total weight was. Well, 35 is a high BMI. Well, that's why I want to know yeah. because I right away uh, that whatever high the height a, is they're that, big. That high high of a BMI, there's no doubt that that's a low low calorie burn and that's an even lower caloric intake. That's well, the, very, very low. I you know, this is a tough one. So you're talking about someone who's really obese, like severely obese. Uh, you still do a mini cut. It's just a longer mini cut. So what I mean by that is if I had, let's say I have a 300 pound client uh, and they need to lose, you know, 150 pounds. It's a big, uh, mm. you know, half their body weight they have to lose, right? I will keep them in a deficit uh, for a decent period of time, but I will break it up with small periods of either smaller deficits mm-hmm. Or even Uh, a maintenance maintenance, because I don't care how big you are, metabolic damage happens. The Biggest Loser is a great example of this. They've done a few articles Mm -hmm. on some of these contestants. Every single one of them had a BMI that was over 35 and they were all severely obese. And all of them, if you watch the show, did severe calorie restriction and in crazy amounts of activity. And afterwards, all of them gained the weight back and, and some of them were measured where they were, you know, just to keep the weight off, they were doing two hours a day of exercise and eating 1,200 calories. And these are big people. It's not like they lost a bunch of weight and they were tiny people. Yeah. Many of them were just naturally big people. 1,200 calories a day, two hours of, uh, of, of exercise every day just to maintain what they did on the show. So you don't want to be put in that position because I think the last 
thing you want is to get yourself out of this Mm -hmm. obesity to succeed at that and then find yourself in a position where How you're gaining the weight yeah. back, you yeah, know? Because now you feel helpless, and then it well, becomes this, like, spiral, yeah. So we, we kind of talked about this the other day, and honestly, if I had if I had you as a client, I would actually have you eating closer to 3,000 calories right now and strength training. Um, our, our goal would not to be uh, creating a big deficit and trying to lose weight right now. Um, I'd be trying to speed up your metabolism. The reason why you feel comfortable eating 1,800 to 2,200 calories is because your body is pretty adapted to that. It's It feels satiated and it feels fine. Uh, that's not a good sign. That And 1,800 calories for someone of your size, you have way more mass and fat, just more weight to you that both fat and muscle tissue require calories. So... They both require calories, and and muscle requires more. So even if you don't have a lot of muscle, and even if you have a lot of fat, it still requires a lot cal- a lot of calories, and you're not feeding it a lot of calories. So yes, fat will start to slowly fall off. But if you are eating in that much of a deficit, that low of calories, and you feel you don't feel hungry, uh, that's not a good sign. You should feel hungry. Mm-hmm. If uh, someone of of your size only eating eighteen hundred calories. You should feel hungry because you have your metabolism is ramped up so high that that's such a low caloric intake. Um, so, I, I would be spending time right now uh, strength training and keeping your calories closer to three. And, and I really don't like. You know, it's kind of funny we picked this question, but because we don't like to normally address, you know, well, individual people, right? Like specifically their goal or what they're mm-hmm. doing, because everyone is so unique. Mm. But looking at that, those numbers. Uh, I wouldn't want you in a, a much of a deficit. I'd be I'd be trying to put some some good muscle on your body and not yeah. put any fat on. So this would be like I'm looking at a chart right here, just so we have a reference. A, a man who's five nine who weighs 240 pounds. So it's a pretty big. Yeah, a big that's a high BMI. Yeah. So it's, what that would be. Imagine the the how it's round, how much cal- round. that that person. Should I mean, be, you really want to you really want to speed their metabolism? Yes, you, know, you, you don't. That's got to be your number one. You don't want goal. cutting at all, right here. You're because you. There's no way. I mean, you're going to make. You're not going to make it all the way at that. You're at one point. So let's say you you truck along and you lose 20, 30 pounds, and it's not your. That's not your done. You're not done. You want yeah because you have another you know fifty or sixty to lose. Where are you going to go? Right. Yeah. You're already at eighteen hundred calories. To get to fifty pound weight loss, you might have either stayed at 1,800 calories or at some point even dropped it to 1,500. Now you want to lose another 60. Like, where are you going to go and where are you going to end up? Because that wherever you end up is where you're going to have to stay to keep yourself that I, way. Okay, so is there any bariatric treatment that would, like, take those steps, like, to, like, build up their muscle muscle first and, like, uh, not worry about gaining weight? Oh, I see weight? what you're saying, like, protocol? Yeah. No, oh, no, 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 Right? No. Like, I've I never mean, even heard of something like that. No, they don't. They, they don't. They don't. They do psychological analysis. They do... Yeah. But they do not. They're not like here's your prescription for resistance I think training. That'd be interesting. Yeah. We want to see your strength and mobility go up first. I mean, that would be brilliant if it they would, did. It would but, be. Well, they don't. I just gave this analogy also on the on the show not that long ago, where I you know, and let's use you for this person we're talking to right now uh, as this example. So we have uh, two ways I could take off training you the next you know thirty days. One way. My goal is to actually get you to where I'm getting you to eat 3,800 calories and not gain any any major fat. So that's my, this is trainer A. That's how I'm going to handle this client. The next 30 days, I'm slowly increasing your calories. I'm trying to negate the extra calories by, you know, my, your program design and increasing volume over time, hoping, hoping that any of those extra calories are going out, are allocated to building muscle versus getting stored as fat. So that's my trainer A goal. Trainer B says, okay, I'm going to do it your way and I'm going to do 1,800 calories to 2,000 calories, put you in about 1,000 calorie deficit every day and lose some weight. At the end of the month, trainer A put you put one pound on you. You're actually heavier than when you started with trainer A. Trainer B lost you 15 pounds of body fat. Who is better in this situation? Right, right. See, the, the person in that, the person on the other end of that, if they don't know any better, they're like, oh, pay per, you know, trainer B, dude, I lost 15 pounds. Whereas the re- the right answer is the person that's building you up. I, I I mean, I'll be honest with you. If you're in this category, if you're se- severely obese 
and you're decide and you know your your options are you know gastric bypass surgery, severe diet. Like, what do I do? I need to lose a hundred. Get pounds. your ass on the forum. I'm gonna <laughs> tell you right now. Like, these are the type of people that we help on there. This is where we're at. Mm. This is where we have an incredible community of people that are supporting and helping right. people. Huge support system. Well, here's what, here's what I was gonna say. If you're if you're this person, you want to lose a hundred pounds of body fat. Uh, dedicate one year to gaining strength and performance and maintaining your weight. Literally, seriously. Give yourself a year where you don't gain any more weight uh, and your whole goal is to get stronger and more mobile in the gym. After that year, start the diet process and watch what happens. The odds that you'll, it'll become permanent are much higher. Unfortunately, most people do not want to hear what I just said. Nobody yeah. who says I want to lose weight, they don't feel like they're winning. You know, at yeah. That point. Nobody yeah. wants to hear that. They're all going to be like, "Fuck that!" Well, I'm not going to wait a year. You also said an extreme amount because it may not. But if you go in with that attitude, that it could potentially take you a year mm -hmm. to really build it up. But I think you would be surprised. You know, again, not, not knowing everything, right? Yeah. Um, we're totally speculating right now. But uh, you know, do not be afraid to feed that body more calories, strength train, put more effort and energy into building muscle and get the idea that you need to lose 50 to 100 pounds out of your head. Uh, what I want, what my goal is, I want to be able to eat more without getting fatter. And if that means I you know, can increase myself up to 3,800 calories, but I haven't lost any weight, you're in a much better place actually a month later eating 3,800 calories and not putting any weight on than the guy who lost 15 pounds from restricting his cal restricting his calories down to a, to eighteen hundred because you'll you'll eventually run out of uh you know room yeah you, you you just can't keep going you know quick commercial break you guys we keep getting asked all the time how can I support the Mind Pump family here's one of the best ways you guys can you guys love that Chimera Coffee that we have Chimera Coffee with a K you go to ChimeraCoffee.com put in the discount code Mind Pump for ten percent at the checkout. Also, if you guys want to know how I have this luxurious beard and you want one too, go to BigTopBeardCompany.com. Put in the discount Mind Pump again, but this time for 33% off. Also, you guys, if you guys have not tried Ben Greenfield's new bars out, they're fantastic. If you want some, go to BenGreenfieldFitness.com forward slash Nature Bite. Put in the code Mind Pump and get 10% off. Go check it out. Cray Manley, what's your view on obstacle course racing, the training, the events? Where do you see it going? How can your training methodology benefit the sport? So uh, <laughs> we uh, love it. And we weren't necessarily big fans. We weren't. I mean, I know I wasn't against uh, obstacle course racing. I knew what the Tough Mudder was and the Spart Spartan Race and all these other ones in yeah, between. Yeah, they looked like a lot of fun. I, yeah, I always knew what they were. They looked cool. They never interested me. Um, and I wasn't. You know, I would. I didn't look at them and think, "Oh my God, they're super awesome." It was just, it was just a thing until we met. Uh, what's his name? Jo uh, Joe. What's Joe's Joe last Decina. name? Joe Decina. Decina. There you go. Joe's last. Uh, Joe Decina, who is the From Spartan founder Up. of uh, Spartan Races. And he, is it, isn't it funny how he's a he's an awesome. He's a fucking awesome. One of the coolest guys I've ever met. Great storyteller. Very cool guy. But he talks about what got him into. Or he tells us what got him into obstacle course racing, mm -hmm. and what it represents. And, and then I got it; like yeah. I understood what it was all about. Like it's literally, uh, you know, we are, we live in this, you know, temperature controlled, uh, fluffy, you know, world where everything is, you know, easy and comfortable. And we're catered. a bunch of pussies. Just and, say it, dude. And we, around. Well, yeah. and we're we you could pussies. sum it up to yeah. that. And, yeah. and, and we don't. We don't test ourselves whatever that means by the way it doesn't mean you have to be like some crazy whatever athlete but we just don't test ourselves on a regular basis at all hmm. physically or mentally but especially physically and there's a lot you can learn about yourself and there's a lot of growth that comes from yeah. reaching those limits because they're challenging it's almost like hacking life if you think about life you grow uh, in life when things are challenging. Well, you can kind of hack that by making things challenging for yourself by doing some of these things. So I can understand the appeal all of a sudden. The way you explained it made total sense. So yeah. that being said, uh, can we even say what we're doing? Yeah, of course we can. Yeah. Yeah, we're so we're going to be uh, the like the official podcast uh, hosting the Spartan Race uh, Championship Dude, in Lake Tahoe. I'm pumped it's gonna be about fucking this. awesome. Yeah, I'm super pumped about this. There's, it's the World Championship, so you know all all the the athletes that around the world even will be there that are the best. How many competitors did you say? 
I think 12,000. So, I mean, yeah. incredible amount of yeah. uh, competitors. Our boy Ben Greenfield will be competing up there as well. So. Yeah, we have, we have a few. We have a few, I know, Mind Pump listeners that will be competing in there. Well, we have quite a few, I think, that mm-hmm. are yeah. going to be competing in there. So, hopefully, we get a chance to see some uh, MP family out there. We went to our first one uh, a little while ago because we went to go, because Ben was competing. So, we went to go say hi. He was in our backyard. And, uh, man, it's. It's rad. It's really cool to watch. I could really see the yeah. the appeal. I I'm, I like I'm, the camaraderie and everything yeah. else too. Everybody contributing and cheering people. Well, on you so. just you're testing yourself. Yeah. I know I know what it feels like. You know to it's re- hard. Yeah, you know? exactly. I know it's what like, it feels like to really test hard. myself and how you feel afterwards. Is, yeah. It's incredible. So I think they're really cool. Um, I definitely see them growing, and the reason why I see them growing in size is because life is getting more and more comfortable. The more. Yeah comfortable life gets the more you're going to see people need, need challenge and you interrupt that whole process of mm-hmm. thinking too so yeah like you said you when you're at home everything is comfortable for you and when you're at work everything's comfortable for you and when you're in your car uh like everything is just catered to us like a lot of times we just don't step out of that and and really challenge ourselves and and what we can deal with adversity wise and overcome and this is sort of like I mean, it, it, it's definitely like one way to do it, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of different ways to do it. But it, like the way like he described it, like how that was really challenged your spirit, and like how mm-hmm. you know you had to you know endure this this feat and and that that kind of reward you get after that. It's it sounded appealing. Yeah. So I I have you know I have a I think it's I have something to admit with it. I not was not a fan of OCR at all. I was not I, even though I'd done a Muddy Buddy before. Like, like you weren't you weren't indifferent. You actually didn't like it. Yeah, but that was yeah. the video, right? The Muddy Buddy. No, I did not. Li- I didn't. I didn't like Log it. Jamming. Um, and just ba- basically because j- personally, not like I didn't like it as like an organization. Like I didn't. I didn't like it personally. I there. I never once said to myself, "Do I want to?" Do-? I've had m- all of my buddies have done them. They've all, of course, invited me to do it and challenged me to do it. And I've told all of them to fuck off. Like I have no. I had no desire to do it just because it doesn't. It doesn't. You're uh, not a good friend, though. I feel like it doesn't. <laughs> you know I mean? Fuck off! Yeah. Like, wow. Hey, dude. I'm into this new thing. Yeah. Golf. Oh, you're an idiot. Yeah, just, fuck off. Yeah, never, it you. never aligned with any of my my own personal goals, so I didn't really connect to it. A lot of the clients that I trained that were into OCR or marathon racing or any of that stuff, I saw more people that had a bad relationship with it, and they used it as their way of getting in shape. It's the only way they could get motivated, right? right so, to train for the so next- uh, being honest, I was I was not a really big fan of it from from that perspective, right? But I have to admit, like. After meeting Joe, and this is, I find it fascinating how meeting some, one person like that can change my whole view mm-hmm. on how I look at it differently now. And when you get the chance to meet the fucking creator of it and talk to him, and it helps that I really, really like the dude. Like, yeah. he is definitely our people. We for sure hit it off with him. Well, I can't wait that episode drops. Oh, I, yeah. I can't oh, wait to introduce uh, him to people, uh, to our audience that have never heard him. He, he, hands down, it was one of, if not the- Like the coolest stories I sat and listened to. Best podcast we've done. Yeah, it was yeah. one of my favorite, for sure. So hit, just getting to know him and then hearing the business side- I, I was so fascinated with that, and when we and we've talked about this before, we knew that where we like your massage businesses, your um, your any of these like cl- clinics that are you know float tank, um, you know all the deep tissue stuff, all this is on the rise because of how plugged in we are as a society, and we're getting worse, right? We're more and more connected to our phones and uh, disconnected from ourselves and those around us. So it makes incredible sense. Dude, that, it's like a concentrated version of the elements, like right, just hammering you. Right. right? It, you're, it, you're like making up for like a year's worth of not, you know, of getting exposed. Yeah, yeah to it like makes dirt. total sense why why it would be a brilliant idea to build a business like this because there's a huge need for it and the need is growing right along with technology, which it's funny because it's totally opposite of that, but that's why. It's because people are going to need this more and more. It's because, an outlet, dude. It's become an outlet. Right. And as, as studies are starting to come out showing that some of these team building event type things like this, like this, you know, obstacle course racing type stuff is being used quite a bit yeah. uh, for team building. And there's now studies showing that it improves, uh, you know, employee producti- uh, productivity and morale and, you know, people. Yeah, because you have like, another type of connection with your coworker. Yeah. Which, so, which is powerful. And, you know, it's, they're really, these are really popular, especially amongst uh, Silicon Valley executives. 
And I think because uh, tech is such a competitive uh, market <laughs> that they're always looking for an edge, right? Yeah. They're always looking for the next edge and how to become more creative or whatever. And so you see this be a big popular thing. Yeah, it's definitely going to grow. I don't, I don't see it uh, slowing down in, in any time in the near future. At some point, it probably will, but uh, I don't. And uh, the biggest one is Spartan. Um, and, you know, we got to attend one of those. I, I mean, I, again, I think they're really awesome. I don't think it's a good idea to use them or marathons or any other event uh, for that matter as a, like Adam was saying, as a reason to work out because there's lots of those people who they cannot find the, the, they can't get themselves to the gym unless they're training for something. Yeah. And these are the same people. But that if ha- this is your sport and yeah. you're training for your sport, you yeah, know, that's cool. That's where it makes. Yeah, sense. which there and there is the we do, and I know we have some listeners that are like serious OCR mm-hmm. like guys. Like right. they literally go to multiple events. Totally different story. It's the same thing with CrossFit. You know, right, like, right, yeah. So it's like if you're using CrossFit for like the ultimate way to beat your body up as a sport, you know, yeah. <laughs> party on. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not like for people trying to get in shape and, and lose that extra fluff. Right, right. I, I do. Say, I will say this: as far as our training methodology is concerned, uh, Maps Performance uh, has its name written all over this. Now, that doesn't mean you just do Maps Performance for uh, OCR because OCR is so um, specific, yeah. uh, technical. You you need to do a, a large degree of technical and specific type training. So. Yeah. If one Build of your, yourself a course like Ben Greenfield's yeah, house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If one of your events involves, you know, monkey bars, then you can get really strong uh, doing all kinds of different exercises like you will in Maps Performance. And we're going to give you a very, very good general overall broad spectrum based type performance. But you better incorporate some monkey bar, you know, exercises or, you know, walking across them because that's what you're actually going to do right. when you compete. So... I would say the best uh, the, the methodology that you'd want to follow for this is you'd want to have a solid base of training mm-hmm. that focuses so on. So you basically run through that first like legit run through of maps performance, just like we indicate in there. Like we're, we're building up that raw maximal strength, and we're 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 getting further with that as far as proprioceptive ability and uh, multiplanar type exercises and adapt, adapting to that specific type of stimulus. And then we move on, you know, and we, we get a little bit more into power specific, like speed power. So, um, these are all attributes, like a, a good athlete, like needs all these very specific type of attributes, especially, you know, obstacle course racing, because it's so varied, you know, right. obstacle course racing involves like lifting yourself and yeah. then long, you need long to summon runs something and, like right away. Yeah. yeah to, to so, hop over. so I would, the base of your training should be something that, works on those attributes which we would consider broad spectrum uh, performance because it's so many different things but then the specifics of your training uh, should also be there in the sense that you are practicing your uh, you are practicing the course um, you know movements and events or whatever on a regular basis and you're not doing them necessarily as part of your workout although you can you're doing them more as you to, to get better at them and to get more technical because here's the other thing some of the best uh, obstacle course race racers in the world, or like if you ever watch, what's that game show on TV where they do uh, Ninja Warrior or whatever? Yeah, which is kind of like that a little bit, right? A little but it's a bit, shorter, yeah. More uh, that's even climbing involved, even more technical, yeah. right? Right. The best athletes that compete in this aren't necessarily the most fit. It's the ones that know how to do the the the, the events or the the challenges the best that have the best mm-hmm. technique. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, because if your technique is off, you can be fit as hell. Have that lots of strength and your and strength, endurance. your strength to weight ratio. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Your strength to weight ratio uh, with that because so many of the events require you holding your body weight up mm-hmm. um, or pulling your body weight up over something. Or even just running, you want to be light. And yeah. You don't yeah. want a lot of <laughs> excess weight. That's yeah. for sure. This is why Ben Greenfield's so great at when you look at him and his yeah. physique right now i mean he's, he's like a spider a super strong hands yeah, and yeah super lean and small like in it he doesn't fill out a, a large t-shirt but when he's he's super strong for how lean. very 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 muscular but not very big yeah and it gives him that you know that particular level of performance but the other thing that he has going for him those which hands is, besides his hobbit, physical and those hobbit feet yeah oh, besides man. his physical attributes is his course in his backyard yeah. he has a course in his backyard where he practices uh, these particular uh, events, and that's part of his training. It has yeah. to be a big part of your training. Well, he so. used to do the triath- 
triathlons all the time, you know, yeah. and like I, I forgot about that. I thought he was just like an obstacle course guy. And when I was up there with Kyle <laughs> and he was like challenged us to like go swim across this like freezing river and then come back, you know, and just like bust out and he just jumped in and started swimming. And then Kyle went in with him. I was like, no way, man. Like I knew, I how knew far, better. How far did Kyle get? Kyle got about halfway. And yeah. I was just like, oh. Like, like, just looking around, like, no, like, did Ben go all the way? Oh, he just jammed, jammed all the way there, like nothing. Then came back. He's a machine, dude. I but, was like, but that's holy a, shit. But, but that's also fucking irresponsible, Ben. I know, you know right? Killed everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna like go get a life preserver and like jump out there. Yeah, because Kyle, because that could suck real bad. You're like no. halfway through, you're like I can't make it back or forward. Yeah. I'm going to drown right I think now. Kyle should take him on, on a jiu-jitsu mat now. <laughs> oh, my That's God. That's what I think. The last yeah. guy I'd want to do jiu-jitsu. Exactly. <laughs> He's big, strong, and technical. Oh, hey, my God. Uh, look, if you go to YouTube, you should check out our channel, Mind Pump TV. We post a new video every single day. Subscribe to that channel. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we answer on an episode like this one, the place to do it is Instagram, and the page to do it on is Mind Pump Media. We all also have personal pages. I'm going to start with the best one first. It's Mind Pump Doug. Whoa. Then it's Mind Pump Justin, Good Mind call. Pump Adam, and Good finally, call, Mind Pump Sal. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>